Okay, welcome to the latest episode of Leverage. Not episode anything. That's right, episode. <laughs> now, we don't know when this one's airing. Anyway, I have Darren Slavens on, the broker of record, the owner, the yep. president, I don't know, magician, all of the above, all of, the above of Slavens and Associates. Um, Thank almost you for a year? having me. Oh, you're welcome. No, almost two years. No, for you. Sorry, I was thinking, when did I join? Oh, yes. Yes. Almost a year. Almost it was a like, year. It was like summer Summer-ish. of last year. Sorry. And it was a year after you took over. It was a year after I took over. So it'll be, for me, it'll be two years in September. Okay. Which is, Muscle are we allowed to swear on your podcast? Yes, okay. absolutely. Which is fucked. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get it. Talk about timing on my part. But anyways, yeah. Yes. Fire brokerage <laughs> right before. Everything goes yeah. to shit. Yeah. Yeah. Good to no, know. We're not allowed to say that the market's going to shit It didn't. It didn't. Well, it, it depends it on the did. definition. It, it did. It totally did. Anyway. It was a challenging so year. The, so I joined Darren um, almost a year ago. And I thought it'd be really interesting to bring Darren on because there were so many people that called me. Um, to, first of all, just congratulate me. It was really lovely. A lot of my clients and friends were really invested in, in the change and, um, and they wanted to know why. And so I, what I came through that was that so many people don't actually understand the brokerage role with, with real estate agents. And I think it's because the, the role of, of the brokerage has changed a lot also. This is no longer like, I actually remember when my parents like sold their house and the guy with like the gold century 21 jacket Jacket, came in. Like I told you, I I I so, so I'm dating myself. I remember that, right? Of course, brown and gold. So, um, yeah. So, so again, and when I first came into the business, um, you know, I joined a, a great brokerage with a huge name, and it was really important to me that I had that brand behind me. And and the business has changed a lot. And, the business has changed um, a lot. I mean, I've been in this business twenty years. Um, when I started in this business, I was an agent. I came into the business right after I got married, and I got a seat at the back, and I was told just. By your dad. Yeah, by my dad. Figure it out. Uh, and then two years after I started, the same guy, my dad comes to me and goes, listen, I'm selling the business to Richard Sherman. If you can get into the deal, shout great. To if not, yeah. you're shit out of luck. Right. So I managed to get myself into the deal. And uh, I had a great 13, 14 year run with Richie. And then oh. Danny Pustle joined us. Yeah. And then Richie got an opportunity that was too good to turn down. And I exercised my... Write a first refusal, and the rest is history. But uh, it has. It has changed drastically. Uh, we've gone... In the 13 years or the last two years? In the 20 years. Okay. In the t- Well, certainly, listen, I've been in this industry essentially since I was born. Right. Right? Because sure. I was always around my dad's office. I feel like my kids will probably say that. Yeah, probably. The, the anxiety we give our children when they... My kids are always like, I'm not going to own a house. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> you know the couch in my office... Yeah. I used to sleep on that couch when I was like four or five That's years old. Hilarious. That couch has passed all the way down from all the different offices on Eglinton. That's so but funny. certainly in my lifetime, I've seen the role of owning a brokerage go from being the real estate business to being the agent business. And we realize that, or I realize that as being a brokerage owner, that our real role is... Our clients really are agents, okay? Now, our clients are clients as well that are selling their homes, and we need to make sure that they have the best experience possible and that our agents are top-notch and do the right job representing our name and our brokerage. There you go. Um, But before that, we have to make sure we get the right agents. And to get agents, particularly as a boutique brokerage, has to be through the service you're providing them. Yeah, and and I think that that's um, I'm glad you brought that up because I I think that's probably the biggest change that I've seen. I've only been doing it for eleven years. Mm-hmm. I actually don't remember when I got my license. It's all a blur. Yeah. And um, actually, the biggest change has been the commissions have gone from a fifty fifty split to where they are today. Really? Oh yeah, they definitely started at fifty fifty. Wow. Uh, and then the next big step was seventy thirty. That was never going to be surpassed. That was crazy. And yeah. then to as high as they go now, it's wow. uh, totally changed. 
So I that was probably one of the biggest things that that stopped me from moving, um, other than I'm just really loyal, mm -hmm. um, is um, I think there are a lot of, and I'm not disparaging agents, people need to do what's right for their business, but mm -hmm. I believe that there are a lot of agents that make that decision um, based on commissions. For sure. So I've seen a lot of people in the business that, you know, one day there's a poster with them with one brokerage and, and a poster with another the next year. And, and so um, it's a really, it was really interesting to me. I think I walked in and, and someone, I mean, I know when I joined you, I didn't even look at the contract, yeah, right? Yeah, it was, yeah. you know, it was more for me, I had, I had different expectations or needs from, um, uh, from the brokerage. But, you know, I think that that is a really interesting prospect to me that people like that agents make that their biggest decision yeah, sure, maker, sure. right? So I always, I, I can always I was gonna say, tell. You talk to agents all the time. All the time. And when yeah. I'm interviewing people, there's two types of agents. There's one where commission comes up in the first five minutes. <laughs> and there's one where commission doesn't come up at all. If it does, it comes up at the ending. Um, I don't think actually I even knew. No. I don't think I even, even asked what your split was. I had like a long it. list of questions the, other than that I drove you crazy with. But. The reality is that commission splits across all the brokerages are essentially the same. Whether you get hit at the beginning, whether you get hit at the end, True. they pretty much all work out to the same. It's just how they're packaged. And it also depends on the volume you're doing, though. I think if uh, you're at a certain volume, then of it doesn't assuming, matter. Assuming sure. everybody's making over 200 grand a year, or 150 grand a year and Which up. they're not. Yeah. No, they're not. But yeah. those are the kind of agents you're going after to get <laughs> to join your brokerage. Right. Um, but um, it's a lot of agents they lack the ability to see the forest through the trees, right? Like they're so concerned about commission, but what the hell do you care? Like 100% of nothing is nothing. Well, it's right? like that interest rate. It's like, well, your rent is 100% interest. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? for sure. But yeah. there is this, listen, I appreciate that every agent thinks they're going to be awesome at this business. We know they're not. And they can't, well, they can be. But most likely they're not going to be, okay? Right. We happen to be very good at picking winners. But you don't know. Actually, that's not true. I'm pretty damn good at picking winners when they come into my office to be interviewed, like when I interview them. It's true. Um, but listen, 2% of the agents do 98% of the business. Well, also, what's the percentage of how we were just having, I was having coffee with a, a mutual friend of ours, Joy Verde, mm -hmm. a, a mentor Love Joy. to me. Love Joy. Yeah. Had a huge crush on Joy in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. I told her. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> and she even said she was like it shocked her to hear the number of agents that don't make it past the first year oh yeah for sure um listen i used to say when i first 13 14 years ago i would tell agents when i'd meet with them to interview them they're getting into the business i'd say listen if you make 30 grand in your first year i know you're going to be successful mm -hmm. if you're not making 100 grand by the end of your third year you're in the wrong business. That has changed completely. Still, if you make 30 grand in your first year. Okay. And agents, when they go around and interview at some of these big brokerages, they're told they're going to make 100 grand, no problem. It ain't fucking happening. Unless you're super, super special, it is almost impossible to pull those numbers in your first year. But also, how, I love the brokerages who are like, you're going to. Well, oh, how? Oh, yeah, exactly. How are you going to do how? that? We. So going back to, so the idea is, is that I what I realized was a lot of people don't even understand that you have to be part of a brokerage. Yeah. So I was a, a, a friend of mine, I was talking to them um, about the move at the time. And I was talking to someone in about someone in your brokerage. And they said, Oh, no, no, they're not there. They went out on their own. Mm -hmm. And I said, No, <laughs> I said, No, they're at the brokerage. And she's like, No, 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 I saw and I said, Okay, so that's good marketing. <laughs> yeah. I said, well, so it's... kudos to them. But any agent, whether you've been in it for 20 years, 25 years, or you've been in it for 25 minutes, mm. you get your license. And then as they call it, you need to park your, you know, your license. You need to be I, don't love, I don't love that term because I think, I think you don't need to park it. I think you need to put it exactly where your business needs it to be. Mm -hmm. But, um, but you do have to be part of the brokerage. And so people are like, well, why? Mm -hmm. Like if, if, if an agent is now, it's my brand, like it's important. People choose me. They mm -hmm. want to work with me. Um, why do I have to be part of a brokerage? And the reality mm -hmm. is, is that there is so much back end stuff also that happens 
forget the support. So I want to have that as a total separate conversation. But mm. there's so much, you know, as I always say, I'm like, well, who's who's got the deposit check? Right. <laughs> yeah. So, so technically, um, really the only one that exists is the brokerage, right? Um, obviously, right. the agents exist and they have what, what's what's created the confusion is teams. Okay. Even I went, when I started a team, when I was mostly an agent more than an owner, even though I was still managing the place. But when I had a team, people were like, oh my God, Darren left Slavens. It's like, no, you fucking (laughs) idiots. I started a team within Slavens, right? So there is a confusion when there are teams because teams are essentially like a brokerage within a brokerage. And they have been the biggest disruptor, I would say, in the last, what would you say, five years? More. More, okay. More. Um, teams, teams have been a trend for 10, 15 years, uh, really hit the engines like 10 years ago. Um, and certainly when you look to the States, even before that, um, but even the teams essentially don't exist. Only the brokerage really exists and it's the brokerage that's doing the transaction. Um, and there's countless reasons for that, mostly for who to sue <laughs> in case things go wrong. But also, you got your trust accounts. You got uh, you got uh, all. Someone needs to be responsible for making sure you're up to date with all the rules, the laws. Um, essentially, the buck stops here. Is is you so know. this is so this is where I want to I want to go into the different uh, brokerages because and I've had um, Joel Kadish on. Um, I've now pronounced him as my in house counsel for mm. the podcast, but. You know, one of the things that we talked about the very first time he was on was how, if I was a lawyer, how mortified I would be that there were all these agents out there, like, running around writing up legal documents. And how you, you know, you go to school, you do the courses, they've made it a little bit harder, but still it's very easy to get your, to your license. If you persevere, I mean, you literally need a high school education and five courses. There's a huge scam, like hundreds of people got licensed without ever doing the work, right? right. They were paying. And people somehow don't speak a word of English per se, and they're still passing the test, right? I also like bought all my computer science course <laughs> assignments in Saugina Western. There you and, go. You know, there you go. <laughs> you <laughs> do what enough. you need to do. Not for not for real estate. Yeah. I was young and silly. Anyway, so, you know, to me, uh, and I, I think that I spend most of my time with my clients mm. apologizing for other agents. And I know that sounds really shitty and I'm sorry. I don't, again, I always say like, I don't want to disparage people, but I really have said this to a lot of agents that I respect and they feel the same way is, you know, we need to have a higher bar uh, of entry. There's no question. Okay. Well, let me interrupt you for a <laughs> okay, second. Please. The issue to that happens at the brokerage level. Okay. Because you yeah, look at so many funny. brokerages out there and there are thousands of agents within one brokerage, hundreds of agents no, within but it's a numbers one game. brokerage. It's, they don't care about quality. They only care about quantity. And not only that. So at our brokerage, the vast majority of people don't do their own offers. Most people don't the do their own bro- their own broker loading. No, I'm yeah. just saying. No, but it's true. Every listing file, even if you broker load your own listing, right? I don't know if you do or not, but if you did, no. I still review the every. Yeah, yeah, I still review every listing file that comes across our office. I look at it. You can't do that when there's 400 agents in your office and you have four staff. No, but so that's what I've had to be on the other, like help the agent on the other side. I I remember to this day, I had a, I had a a listing in Mississauga, it was a condo. And I said to my clients, I'm actually nervous for you about this offer. I know it's the higher one. Mm -hmm. I get that you want to take it. I said, but I don't think he knows what he's doing. And that can come back to bite us, sure. whether it doesn't close, whether he hasn't explained it to the clients. Mm-hmm. I had, I actually had to go back to the agent and go, you're missing like an essential clause because although it was going to help his clients, it was also going to protect my client, right. right? And so I agree with you in the sense that, you know, you've got these, and I won't name the brokerages, but like that are taking part-time agents. It's very dangerous. It's very dangerous. They don't know what they're doing. I mean, 
I don't know if it was you that told me there was an age, there was a brokerage that had a model that you had to pay to speak to the broker of record. Like every time you, you had a question and I know we were just talking about this. Someone on my team while I was away called you like 10 times. Can you imagine it would cost an agent and an agent who's not doing a lot of business and now is watching their numbers is like, I'm going to save myself a thousand dollars. I'm just going to wing this and get sued or have the brokerage get sued. It's crazy. I I hadn't heard that. I've heard of models sort of like that so it wasn't me that told you that but i believe it i believe it entirely um it's the listen it's just a numbers game right you you, like they don't care they just want the fees um a lot of these brokerages with huge numbers aren't based on commission splits they're based on uh monthly fees or transaction fees or whatever the case may be yeah and i'm not down talking any particular model whatever works for you is great but you cannot possibly know what a thousand agents are doing. You can't, you can't have your finger on the pulse. You can't know what what service they're providing to the public. You just can't. And that's in a sense, like, think about how much money we get paid. Think of the service we're providing people. There's a responsibility on my behalf to make sure that the best people possible, or at least the most trained and the most qualified are out there giving that service under our brand. And if you are a middle management individual that has been hired to run a branch of a brokerage, you're looking at your bottom line. You're not looking at, I mean, you're not looking at, I have a thousand agents and I want to make sure every single one of them is successful. I just want to make sure that I can tell my head office that I recruited 100 extra agents. Exactly, 100%. Right? So there's people who don't even... I mean, we had an incident the other day where we had an agent who booked a showing at one of our showings, did a video, posted it as their own, and... And then ghosted us when we tried to follow because she said she had an uh, had a an a uh, a client. Yeah, she faked and I, showing. And I actually said the brokerage out loud, but I couldn't do it with a straight face because it was like you know, as soon as I see like ABC Realty East, yeah, <laughs> I'm like run for the hills. Yeah, well, a couple of things. Think about. It's such a pleasure when you're dealing with a professional on the other side. Oh, it's done. By the way, it's a done deal. It's a done it's deal. It's a done deal. You know there's nothing I've you said can't it a work times. through. It's it, great. I get a good agent on the other side, 90% of it is done. Yeah. But when you're talking about middle management, that sort of thing, that's when it also goes back to realizing you're in the agent business. I always say that it's we have a vested interest in making sure our agents succeed because we're small. Because we're small, we don't succeed if they don't succeed. So we spend all our time working with, like, we're also not afraid of our agents building their own brand. We invest in their brand as well as our own brand and Hence help them build that. our podcast studio we're sitting yeah. in. Thank you very much, yeah. Slavins. Our, yeah, our pleasure. Yeah. But that's, it's, it's just an approach to this business. And some people are stuck in the past and some people are moving forward. But it's, it's, listen, there's less and less, sorry, more and more business is going to be done by fewer and fewer people. The most encouraging thing for me, I follow the trends out of the United States because it's six, six months to two years ahead of us. Yeah. But the trends are that this new generation prefers um, small market, prefers boutique, prefers hyper, hyper local. Um, which is good news for brokerages like ours, which there may be two or three left in this entire city. We might even be the only one left in this entire city uh, of this size that's independent completely. Um, But that's that's what the millennials apparently prefer. Yeah, because a lot of them have been bought up as well, right? So you hear from from these young agents um they're looking for commission splits what else are they looking for like, no, so, what do you so, see as a so the young agents aren't looking into? for commission splits oh okay so i'll tell you what i notice about this industry okay when kids come in when young yeah, kids fuck we're so old i don't know how that happened <laughs> how did I get but when <laughs> when younger true. agents come in or even when they don't have to be younger when new agents come in yeah they know two words it seems they know team and they know leads, okay? Interesting. So teams is now something that they're also Everybody asking thinks for. they need to be on a team, and everybody all thinks they need to be given leads. I was going to say they want to be on a team because they want the leads. 
Well, yeah, but they don't know that. Part and part. Oh, okay. They don't know that. They okay. just know they've heard they should be on a team. They want the easy, the easy path to money. Not even the easy path to success. They want the easy path to money. Okay. Not so, during COVID, they didn't want to be on a team. Maybe oh, not, but yeah. I wasn't really in the position then. So I couldn't, yeah. you know, I was still interviewing people, but not yeah. like I am now. So I think it's a huge mistake uh, when somebody comes into this business and they're one because listen, there's brokerages out there, their specialty is giving leads. I don't want to comment on the quality of leads, but it gives people something to do. The hardest thing about this industry is knowing how to fill your days Monday to Friday, nine to five. Nobody has a clue what to do, how to fill that time. They're great at working with clients. They're great at showing once properties. They have it. Once they have them. They don't realize this whole business is about getting clients. So they We're want also leads. knowing that, but like knowing when you can't catch the bus and, sure. and just stopping the run. A hundred percent. But so they all want leads. So a kid comes in and they say, well, how many leads do you guarantee us a month? And I go zero, <laughs> not a single lead, but I will teach you to get leads on your own. Right. Why do you teach want to learn this business yeah. in a way that you're going to always be relying on somebody else to hand you business? Learn to do this business on your own and you will always be successful. That's the key. And it's the same thing with teams. Why join? If you're joining a team right at the beginning of your career, you're not coming in with any leverage per se. You're not coming in with a book of business. Learn how to build that book first. And then you have something to bring that team. And if you ever want to leave that team in the future, you got something to fall back on. Right? So it's interesting. I mean, I also probably be biased because I have a team. Yeah. But um, So did I. No, no, no. But I also think like I've reflected on that as well. And I've thought, so when I first started, I actually remember asking Joy, like, should I be on a team? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I was also older and, and I wasn't just out of school. And, and I, I imagine like people took me a little bit more seriously because I think that in this business, being a little older and having the experience does. Having some grays. For sure. Well, who wants a wuss for their agent, right? You want a killer. <laughs> you want someone with some battle scars. So, yes. Yeah, that's definitely not a word that people would use when they think of I cleaned me. up my lip. Oh, what? Okay. <laughs> no, a wuss. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah. but I think that. You know, I you know, and I remember Joy saying to me, "Do not go on someone's team. Mm -hmm. They'll own all your clients. They'll Build take your, your business, brand. and you know a million people. Like, mm. just go farm it and do it, right?" Yeah. And I'm glad that I did, but I think that I also, ha I mean, I, I was actually just talking to my team this morning about this. Like, I came out of the womb selling. Like, I literally, sure. like, my husband to this day will look at me and go, can you stop selling me? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, it might just be at a restaurant we want to go to. But I think that if you're really trying to understand the business and you're 25 years old mm -hmm. and you need to make some money and you want to really understand. And, and by the way, you're not, not every brokerage is like yours. Well, so that's what I was going to so say. So I was going to say, like, I would, I start, again, I started at a very lovely brokerage and, and I, and I had a wonderful time there. But I would say that if I had been on a team back then, mm -hmm. I might have catapulted my, even just my knowledge, forget my business. But you'd still probably be on the team and you wouldn't be yeah. your own team. Right. Okay. Yeah, fair. So but again, people... I don't think I'm, an, I'm a, like the average. I just don't. I don't think well, I'm an average. It's the same example. in any job, any sport. You want to be the best, you got you to gotta make the sacrifices. But like you just said, not every brokerage is like ours. If you're walking into a big box sort of brokerage situation where you're not going to get hands-on-hand -hand training, where you're not going to get someone holding you accountable and helping you work on a business plan, join a team. 100,000% join a team. But if you come upon a situation where you're going to have your hand held, you're going to get the support and the help, you don't need the team. Take the long road. It will pay off in the end, and you'll have a team one day, as opposed well, to being on a team one yes, day. Yes, and sale, sales is the now, long game. Hold on. There is nothing wrong with being on a team for certain people, okay? Certain people were made for teams. They're awesome. We have people in our office who are fantastic agents and yeah. they've had great careers and they are huge assets to their team. Yes. Okay. But that's not everybody. It's not everybody that can take that role. They're special people to take that role. One, they don't have like... I, it took, you know I how have long it ego. took me to find... No, but you I... You must have a me... bit of an ego too to, ha to have a team, right? Uh, no, but I also... It took me a long time to find the right fit because... Mm -hmm. Um, and listen, I've always said, like, if I had someone who came on my team who, you know, 
learn the ropes and and work their butt off and grew their own business and was like, you know what, I'm 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 going out on my own. I wouldn't mm-hmm. disparage. I think it's great. It's happened sure. in, within your brokerage, right? Yeah. I, um, but I agree. Like the whole, you know, you can't put on a play with twenty, you know, lead actresses or mm-hmm. actors. And I think want, that supports. You want that A personality. Yeah. The, you want that killer balance. instinct. I want to be the man. I want to be the best. I want to be the woman. I want to be the best. Those are the people that are successful in this business. Yeah. They don't need to be smart. They don't yeah. need to be. By the way, you don't. Because I'm not. I just want you to know I'm no, not the smartest You are person smart. In <laughs> but you, you don't have to be. That I'm always asked, what's the number one asset to come into this business? And the answer is hunger. Okay, and then you need to realize and you're hustle. in the sh- yeah you're in the shameless self promotion business. You have to be able to go out there and ask for business. And you know what the other thing is also. I, listen, we're all coin operated to a certain extent. Like I, I, we all have our budgets. We're building a business. We we have our numbers, but I also believe the people that are successful in this business are not the ones that are doing it for the money. Oh, for sure, truly. And but I they go- are doing it to win. But winning in money is very different in 100%, my books. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I have to tell you, I would win for zero dollars. Yeah, I never. If anyone has played a board game with me knows, <laughs> I don't. I don't play, and my whole family won't let me play anymore. Like I can't, can't do it without winning. I know. But it doesn't mean it's about business. And you know, and going full circle on these people who are coming and going. What's the commission split? I've hopped from this one to this one because I'm going from an eighty twenty to a ninety ten and whatever. Those are the ones that are never going to be successful. I don't believe it. What well, depends on your definition of success? Fair, right? Like my long-term. everybody always asks me, what what's my long term goals, right? And I my answer is always, I just want to be the best. Like I just I do. I want like anybody in my life that ever told me I couldn't do it, I want to be able to look at and say, Fuck you, <laughs> like you are so this wrong. Is why Darren and I get along. <laughs> I just like I want to win. I and uh-huh. a large part of me wants to crush the competition as well. Mm-hmm. Like it wouldn't be as sweet a win if the competition didn't lose, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. but then you are also carving out a space for yourself where I'm not so sure there's like any real competition. I mean, I don't see the large. I look at my competitors as much bigger than me. They are much bigger than me. Right. Fair. And I know who they are. But I also feel like I don't even see them as competitors. Like in the sense that like they just have such a different model. Yeah. It's such a different model. Yeah. But my version of winning and com- competition is to continue to take market share with fewer people. Well, yeah, I was going to say, because you don't actually want to grow. No. Like this, your intention, it's interesting because success, you would think, is that Darren wants to build like this huge thousand, two thousand no. person brokerage. And that's not the no. intention. No, I'd like, I, I think we're at around 75, 76 agents, something like that. I would cap out at 100 uh, because I can't offer the service uh, that I offer now to more than that, I don't think. Mm-hmm. And uh, I want quality over quantity. And if I could repeat this in a couple of different cities, but just one office, not multiple offices, you cannot maintain quality control. No. And franchise. It, yeah, no, I can't do it. I'm too hands on. Sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm too hands on and I couldn't deal. So I want the best. So. Um, and I love bringing new agents into the business. I yeah, do. You do. It takes... We have a lot of really amazing yeah. young agents that are just cutting their teeth in the business. I sit with them, um, uh, you know, whenever they want help or yes. happy to, to, to lend, you know, and just also to tell, like, reassure them. Like, I think that that's the hardest, like, just to hear them be like, what else can I do? And what else should I be doing? And it's like, sometimes just having the faith of like, you're doing all the right things. Yeah. It'll come. And that's our biggest difference. That's our culture in a nutshell. Everybody has moved away from offices. You go to any of our competitors who aren't really competitors, their offices are ghost towns. Nobody goes in. Yeah, I couldn't get a You know, one of the things I, I said to you um, when you were thinking about coming here is that this business doesn't need to be a lonely business. You don't need to be on your own. You can have partners that have no say in your business, that can't tell you what to do with your business, but are there for you to bounce ideas off of, to talk to, to encourage you, to shoot the shit with. Like... Everybody else is moving away from that, and I'm moving towards that because there are people that want it and need it. Like, I need the social aspect, and I know 
that well, we it, are social it, animals as agents. Yeah, very 100%. Much so. And it's funny because I was never... Remember mm. I told you, I'm like, yeah. I don't go to the office. I'm not an office person. Even when I worked in corporate, I hated going to the office. I was like, I don't need any friends. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. You know, I don't need to go and sit in an office. I ha- cannot sit still for very long. Mm. And uh, and you gave me an office and I love my office. And I come as often as I want because, again... Mm. It's a place where I feel so productive and there's tons of support and the difference is and and I think that the business has changed a lot. I mean, I'll throw out names like Tom Story, who, you know, is a new um, era of agents where when I first started, and again, this is only a decade ago, where like everyone kept everything close to the chest. No one talked about what they did. And now you have this, maybe it's the rise of social or whatever it is. I don't know. But People are sharing their successes. Sure. And I th- and going back to the, like more business will be done by fewer of us, mm-hmm. the fewer of us are banding together because yeah. we want this business. And I say this truthfully because there are, there are times when I come across agents where I just, I'm like, you know what? You're not doing us any favors. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we have a hard enough time. Like, when you think about it, like all the people in respected professions, like mm. real estate agents are down here. Well, there's this misconception, right? That real estate's easy. You go get your real estate license. You're going to make two, $300,000 a year. No problem. That's why it 60% couldn't be of them don't last past the further first year. from the yeah. truth. This is the hardest job. I don't mean to belittle anybody else. Like obviously being a doctor or dent, whatever is ve- a lawyer is very hard. But this business, you only eat what you kill. Yeah. And if you cannot go out and get business or don't know the steps to take to go out and get that business, you're toast. And when people share, that's great. We're putting these kids on the right track. We're putting veterans on the right track. We have 65-year-old agents who are coming and asking you, me, whoever, for help to to adjust. Yeah. And the nice thing is... There's so many people out there. Like you, you brought up Tom's story, right? He came into one of our mastermind yeah, sessions yeah. and he was helping out. He's actually coming in uh, in a month to do another course with us. But I said to him, like, he literally writes out his recipe for success and he shares it with everybody. And I said, so you yeah, only do very that. Generous guy. Yeah. I said to him, you only do that because nobody's going to do it, right? He's like, yeah, 100%. I'll tell everybody what I do. And I know there's a handful of agents out there that will actually put in the work. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So my goal is to find that handful of agents that will actually do the work. I didn't even write down all our questions. So I know we're running out of time. I would ask why a final question would be, where do you see, because everything's catapulting like mm-hmm. AI and chat GPT and everything. Sure. But where do you see um, the brokerage role in like five years? Five years is a long time from now. I mean, yeah. it'll be here tomorrow, but like. So the brokerage role or the business? Let's go brokerage and then I'll hear the bit. I'd like to hear the business. Okay. So in terms of the brokerage role, um, I see that actually continuing along the path. It's very similar. I think that the brokerage role is headed in the same direction that the agent role is headed in that, you know, I've always been asked about disruption in this industry. Oh, discount brokerages are going to destroy the business. AI is going to destroy the business. Uh, websites are going to destroy the business. Virtual tours are going to destroy the business. Land transfer tax is going to destroy the business. Didn't Zillow Bullshit. just <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. they all do. The, the, right. the disruption in this business, the change in this business um, for agents and likewise will be for brokerages is the level of service we now have to provide our clients. Yeah. When I started... Our value has you, changed. Our value and our proposition has changed completely. Like when I started, you set your people up for automatic listings. You listed a property, filled out some paperwork. It was on MLS. Now we all have teams of five, six people. The amount of work that goes into getting a listing ready. Fucking, you're doing a podcast. Like what ridiculousness is that? Well, how is that part of real but estate? that's what I said in my first episode. Like, I'm like, if someone had told me 10, 11 years ago. bullshit. That I was going to have to have a podcast, I'd be like. Peace out. Yeah, but but you have to adapt. <laughs> but now I love it. But and yeah, yeah. the level of service that brokerages will have to continue to provide um, will continue to rise as the agents do. Yeah. Um, you know, our goal, I look at my goal as a coach, as a cheerleader, as somebody to help my agents build their business and their brands, because if they don't, I don't. And I think it's just going to get more involved. I think... I agree. You know, it's... But I think it'll also, I think that's where, like, again, going back to the teams and and making it hard, that entry point harder is that 
Um, and I, I can't remember who it was who was on a podcast I was listening to who ran one of the bigger teams in Toronto. And she said, you know, it's making it harder for that individual agent to to compete at times because think about all the things that you do for a listing now, uh, Darren, compared to 20 years ago. Still, I don't buy How much it. for the staging, how much for, for cleaning, sure. for the I marketing, for- But there were still barriers back then. They yeah, were just fair. different. Like- uh, just in closing, I'll say, you know, for the last 15 years, agents that have not been successful, it's always been the same thing when they come in to say they're quitting or they're leaving or whatever. It's like, you know, I've tried it. Everybody <laughs> in my database already knows an agent or their Sorry, sister's an that's, agent. That's mean. I don't mean to laugh at that, but it's true. Like the, But it's the tried. That's, it's that's the just tried, what they say right. because they just don't take that step to move past it. We all, every successful agent has faced the same barriers and push through also by the way uh, we have them like, yeah that's we have what I'm them saying. like i we've both been doing this for a long time 100%. i have months where i'm like oh my god the difference <laughs> just will be it might take longer Fair. instead of a three-year window to get to a hundred thousand a year maybe now it's five years Interesting. but still the ceiling is as high as it could possibly okay. be all right. So, well, thank you. Thanks you're for welcome. being on. My pleasure. And uh, if you are, I don't know if any agents listen to my podcast, but if you are thinking about getting we'll into the out. business, Call I, I made a great, great decision for my business. So I would, uh, where can people find you, Darren? They can find me at uh, slavensrealestate.com or whatever my social is. Just search me. <laughs> just, I don't search, know. Just say whatever my um, social is. Yeah. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks right. for having me. Yeah. Cheers. That was good.